talk about EV and CV. Um, so this is probably arguably the most confusing concept um, from our discussion group. So basically EV and CV are looking at um, sort of changes in consumer welfare. So EV uh, measures at the old price level versus CV um, measures at the new price level. So uh, the equivalent variation measures the dollar equivalent of utility gain under old prices P that is, EV is equal to the dollar amount we must give to the consumer so that she achieves her new so that she achieves her new utility under the old prices. Uh, so we can write um, okay. Let's also talk about what CV means. So the compensating variation measures the dollar equivalent of utility gain under new prices. So that is, CV is equal to the dollar amount we must take away from the consumer so that she achieves her old utility under the new prices. So I understand that was a mouthful, so let's write that down. Um, actually, before that, we, yeah, so basically we have, the context is we have a price, a change in the price vector from P to Q, um, and we have Y is equal to the income. Now we want to, we have the indirect retail functions, V of P, Y, under the old prices, um, and that becomes Y of, sorry, V of Q, Y, under new prices. Um, however, as we know, Utility functions and indirect utility functions are ordinal and not cardinal. That is, the their units don't make sense because you could just convert from one currency to the other, and sort of that doesn't exactly um, tell us quantify. That doesn't help us quantify the exact change. So that's why we introduce the money metric utility function, and the money metric utility function is an example of the uh, of the expenditure function that we just discussed a few minutes ago. So we have E of R V P of Y. Um, versus, or that becomes um, E, R, V of Q and Y. So R is a price vector. And yeah, so, so both of these are price vectors and V is your indirect utility function. Um, so next we are ready to express EV and CV in terms of both. So EV uh, is equal to uh, the expenditure function at your old price level of your indirect utility function at your old price level minus your uh, expenditure function at your old level of your indirect utility function at your new price level. Um, on the other hand, CV compensating variation is definitionally equivalent to the expenditure function at your old price level um, taking as input your indirect utility, sorry, the expenditure function at the new price level, taking as input your indirect utility function at the old price level, uh, minus your expenditure function at the new price level of your indirect utility under the new price level. Um, so this was a lot, but basically this is saying under my old price level, so under P, um, how much am I, how much should I pay you so that you get the same utility um, given this price change. And CV is saying under the old price, under the new price of some Q, how much should I pay or take away from you so that you have the same utility level when prices change from P to Q? Okay, so um, let's sort of simplify this a little bit. Um, we know that basically uh, EV is equal to Y minus E of P, V, Q, Y. Um, and remember, y is equal, um, as we defined above, so y is equal oh, to e of p v uh, p y is equal to e of q v of q y. So this we talked about a little bit before, but this is saying just like plugging the same things, we should always have the same things, right? Okay, so um, we substituted in this for y, but again, we can substitute in uh, this. So e of q, v of q, y minus e of p, v of q, y. Um, remember, these are the same. And that is our new expression for ev. Now we want to derive another expression for cv, and cv is just uh, this thing minus y. Here we're using that this term is equal to y. Previously, we're saying that this term is equal to y. Um, so again, sort of rewriting y, we can express this as this thing minus 
u or e of p comma v p y um and we can express actually this as an integral uh, because remember this is the difference in two ex uh difference in two exponential functions and by shepherd's lemma we know that the derivative of the exponential function with respect to prices is exactly equal to the hicksian demand which allows us to express this difference as the integral from the uh the new price level to the old price level or sorry the old price level to the new price level of the hicksian demand which is h of x v uh q y dx um uh, awesome so here um for full detail this is del e x v q y del p dx okay this um by voice entity is equal to the integral from p to q del e comma x or x comma v p y or del x sorry this is actually also um still shepherd's lemma not voice entity because we're still working with the hicksian function and solving that that's equal to the integral from p to q of h x v p y dx okay um, now that we express this, we have another term that's uh, also the consumer surplus. So the consumer surplus is equal to um, to the integral from p to q of your Marshallian demand function. So x p uh, right x p of y d p. Awesome. Uh, Right, so now we are ready to graph these, and uh, this is, I think, the most fun but also um, intricate part. So um, just as a reminder, we have our Hicksian demand and Marshallian demand, and because uh, our Marshallian demand contains both income and substitution effects, Its slope is going to be different from the Hicksian demand function uh, when it only captures, which only captures the substitution effects. Um, so in the context of this, let's talk about a normal good versus an inferior good and how their uh, Marshallian and Hicksian demand functions contrast with each other. So, um, so because for normal good, the income and substitution effects works in the same direction. Um, this is saying, if I get richer, um, I consume more of it. If the price increases, I substitute away and consume less of it. So um, that means that the Marshallian demand is going to have a steeper curve on the demand function uh, compared to the um, inferior good. Whereas the inferior good, um, the income and substitution effects work in opposite directions. Um, cool. So now we can talk about, um, now we can draw the graph. So um, let's actually, we'll be drawing um, an inverted demand curve where we have Q uh, on the x-axis, the quantity on the x-axis, 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 and P on the y-axis. So here's our Marshallian demand, and we have two Hicksians. So because we're um, graphing P on the y-axis, the Hicksian demand is actually going to be steeper than the Marshallian demand, um, even though it only captures one effect. That's because we're inverting this graph. OK, so the Marshallian demand, uh, the Hicksian demand inevitably intersects the Marshallian demand at a point. So when you move the Hicksian demand in response to a price change, so when you have a price increase, you're, you're moving this way. Um, the, the things intersect at two points, and um, the consumer surplus is actually just equal to this area under this curve. Um, so this is integrating out under the Marshallian demand curve for a change in prices. Um, similarly, similarly, we have the Hicksian demand, and the Hicksian demand um, tells us how much EV and CV changes. So um, the EV integrates under the new price vector, uh, right, the EV under, uh, integrates under 
the knee price factor um, and our knee price factor is this. So the EV, so this is our new price factor, our old price factor. Right, so the, this is EV. Um, okay, EV. And CV integrates under the old price vector. So this is our old price vector and we have this. Okay, so we can see that the green area, um, EV greater than change in consumer surplus, greater than the CV for a price increase. Conversely, for a price decrease, we know that EV is less than the change in consumer surplus is less than CV. Um, and the intuition is that the Marshallian kind of lies right in the middle because the, the curve, as you can see, is like this chunk is like right in the middle between the two Hicksians when you change the Hicksians. So the, uh, because the C, CS, the consumer surplus, integrates under the Marshallian, it's always going to be some kind of average between the EV and the CV. Okay, so when are EV, CV, and consumer surplus equivalent? Well, the three things are equal. Um, so, I mean, this should also be intuitive because we have two different cases when their price increases or decreases, so when their price moves in different directions. So one would expect, one would expect that when, um, when there are no income effects, no income effects, then EV, okay, this is our cool result. So let's put it in a blue color. EV equals change in consumer surplus equals the CV. Um, this is true under the quasi-linear utility function because remember for the quasi-linear utility function, you have E of C1, C2 is equal to C1 plus some uh, function. So let's say like log C of 2. And the quasi-linear just says um, I have a corner solution or I can have an interior solution. I consume my physical good. So this is like uh, not a necessarily a physical good, but like an actual good. And this is my numerator good. The numerator good is normalized to have price one because it's just money. So I would consume my physical good as long as my marginal utility discounted by prices is greater than the marginal utility of my numerator good discounted by the price of the numerator good, which is one. So, um, and this also relates, you know, to the, uh, to the sort of substitution or the, yeah. So this says the ratio of the marginal utilities is equal to the ratio of the prices. So rearranging, we get that U prime of C1 over P1 is equal to U prime of C2 over P2. This is without, you know, any discounting hyperbolic or exponential. So basically I would be consuming my numerator good when this is true. Um, and I will be switching when this is no longer true. Um, so I would start consuming my numerator good as long as the physical good brings me less marginal utility than the numerator good. Okay, so this is, um, I guess it was intended as a short uh, overview, but it turned out to be rather long, but I hope this is helpful. Thanks.